so hello everyone. Uh, so I guess my part here is, is following up on what my colleague Julian Williams has a little bit uh, talked about yesterday, uh, where we sit as a business school and especially in Durham uh, as a business school and a new department of finance. But many of the things that I want to talk about is not just about finance. Uh, it just happens to be that we have this collaboration going on with the Risk Accounting Standards Board for a couple of years. And since I joined the school, uh, I was kind of brought on board, not just because of my German language skills, but uh, because I'm interested in kind of bank accounting risk and, and so on. So just to get these polls out of the way. Perfect. Yeah. So what I wanted to talk about today is, um, well, we call, we call it the research methodology, but it's really, I wanted to make a case or, or uh, kind of tell people where we see ourselves as academics in the business school helping out or facilitating the process. So obviously there has been a collaboration here on, on the methodology before, uh, but what are the kind of questions we as academics would ask in, in the context of risk accounting? And uh, where do we see ourselves contributing to kind of having a success of the initiative that Peter is, is calling for with other people? So what I thought I would uh, tell you a little bit about is what is generally as a finance academic researcher, the philosophy and the strategy behind what we do uh, what is the kind of output that we have? Obviously, we're not a for-profit company, so our, our incentives and or things we, we're interested in might be slightly different to that of a single company. And uh, I'll show you um, what I mean by that. And kind of how we approach empirical research uh, that evaluates methodologies like this, uh, how we would do that in, in a larger fashion. And then I just want to basically state what are the questions we would be interested in in the context of risk accounting and where do we see ourselves um, contributing along the road in the next few months on, on making that initiative a success? So generally, I mean, you could come up with 10 or more bullet points, but I thought five might be enough for this, this purpose. What is the kind of basic ground rule that we have as finance academics when we think about doing a study, whether it's in risk accounting or any other topic? Uh, we, you know, obviously collect data and test hypotheses. That's, that's the methodological part. But generally how we approach research and also what career incentives are, we go for quality over quantity. So our goal is not to have uh, 20 papers on the same topic uh, that get citations, for example. We would like to have what we call uh, paper battleships. So usually a finance researcher will have one paper that is not exactly a book, but it's kind of between a short article and the book that you carry around for several years, trying to improve the quality by going to conferences, talking to your colleagues, talking to practitioners. and. Uh, improve that battleship and basically uh, lead that battleship into, into safe haven, into a publication. Uh, we try to do research, not necessarily just by gathering data, trying to figure out what is going on in the data set and then coming up with a question. We would like to start with an economic theory that ha is the foundation of how we do things. When we think about risk, we would like to think about uh, who is that risk basically affecting and where is that coming from? How do we classify certain types of risk uh, and not just kind of data mining um, that is uh, driven from the data set that we just happen to find somewhere. So what, what I think is, is unique in, in things we do is we really, really go for robustness uh, in order to get our, our papers accepted and, and, and our research um, validated by peers. Uh, so basically when, when we do some work, we don't just look at one, per, one scenario, we don't look at one case study, we try to get things done for a large sample, we try to uh, use several measures of risk, See, uh, obviously, you have to discuss how these differ in, in many occasions. But we try to have this robustness also by using sound methodologies that kind of are based on state-of-the-art uh, academic literature. So obviously, uh, when you think of a, a backtest of a value at risk, it's, it's something that was, I think, developed in, in industry. But in academia, we would look at not just one way of estimating the value at risk, but we would test uh, several versions of those and see whether results that we would like to convey in our work uh, hold for multiple measures of the same thing. What I think is uh, important to highlight and, and maybe helps people to understand how we as academics think about things, we don't just want to have one, one case study where things kind of work and we do things for one company. We are interested in having what we call external validity and uh, well, ideally through applying things that we find um, have an impact on, on industry as well. But yeah, we would like to have external validity in the sense that everything we do, we would like to do for as large of a sample of companies or of any kind of foundation as possible, we do as many tests as possible. And one thing we are mostly interested in is we try to, want, we want to say something that is not just a correlation, but we wanna have a certain kind of uh, causality that we, that we wanna infer 
in things we do. And then, you know, if that applies to a broad sample, we can say something about a whole sector, for example. And obviously, because we're in a university, we're not just doing research, we also do uh, education. We, we want to disseminate our research, not just in, in our classroom and, and conferences, but obviously in, in, in a larger circle like here, uh, where we try to, to get our results out and then get the peer review, um, peer review in for improving the work. So this is how we kind of what the philosophy is. And I think what's good to, good to highlight is where, where are the differences between an academic like myself and talking to someone from industry. So what we as academics would like, we would like to have a large sample of data that we can use to test hypotheses. So what we do usually, we download data from uh, databases such as CRISP or CompuStat in the US, Capital IQ, whether it's on banks or kind of non-financial non companies, we, we would go to those databases, download as many financial statement items as we can, and then relate those, uh, those things uh, to each other to test an hypothesis. So that's uh, related to what, what we call the large sample, uh, the data avail availability here. But obviously what I would also like to have as a researcher is a really, really granular uh, view of the firm. So if I go to these databases like CompuStat, I can download basically the basic financial information like total assets, the profitability and so on. But I don't know anything about what they actually do, for example, in, in terms of risk accounting units, if we were to implement that. So this granularity of going into the product level of, of a company is usually not available. Obviously, that's something an academic would like to have. But if we are going for that, we can only usually go for a case study um, where we go into one or two companies and figure out uh, what are the actual positions uh, a company has on, on some, some items on the product type. And in, you know, in an optimal situation, we have that kind of information for all kinds of firms. So this intersection that I highlight here is where we want to, want to be. And this is exactly where I think the academics should come together with the industry side, having a collaboration, uh, lots of partners involved uh, where we can get granular data for as many firms as possible. So we can make a case, not just for one firm where this approach might work, but for a, a whole universe or a whole sector, that would be the ideal case. Right, uh, but just to give you an example of, um, okay, I, I can state our research has high quality and um, everything is great. And for, from an academic perspective, this is exactly uh, what, what we need, but you know, some, someone else might not believe me. So I just wanted to give you some indication of what, what I mean by uh, having high quality work published in Jones. What, what does it take to get there and kind of whether you should uh, you know, involve academics and believe academics in, in, do, um, in, in doing things. So just an example of kind of shameless self-promotion from, from something I've done over the last few years is a study on capital requirements in the banking sector and whether that affects certain types of risks that banks are exposed to. And just to be clear, I'm talking about financial risks here. I'm not talking about what we are interested in later in the non-financial risks, but I'm, we're asking very basic questions. Uh, do capital requirements actually matter for bank risk? And you know, as usual, the answer, it, it kind of depends. It's, it's not a yes or no. Um, but just to give you an idea of what, what indicators of quality, robustness, and so on mean. So quality for me is, we, we, this is a study we've been working on for over five years. So we started writing in 2017 and finally got published five years later in, in a very good journal. So that, that's kind of highlighted here, the FT50 is kind of 50 best business journals. Uh, but what it took, it took us over 70 pages of explaining why the things we do are robust, why the things we do uh, matter for a large sector, not just a couple of firms and making that case that it should be whatever we find should have impact on how we do policy in, in the case here for capital requirements. So that's, that's kind of the quality, the robustness. Uh, what I mean by that is we don't look at one type of risk. And even if we look at similar types of risk, we take different measures. So if we have capital requirements that definitely affects capital ratios, which reflect some sort of risk, uh, but we also have the market risk that we can measure in, in various ways. So we see that the robustness comes from not just one aspect of risk, but many. And uh, the external validity that I mentioned before is we try to use as large of a sample as possible. So we, in this case, looked at European banks that were listed, so over, uh, over 100 at least. But obviously, if you go to the US, that's much more. Uh, and we look at kind of a policy change as a, as a treatment to certain types of, of companies here uh, so that we can compare some of them that had a change versus some that didn't have a change. And we can actually infer something that, like a counterfactual. If this regulation was not there, uh, you know, would, would things still be the same or, or different? So what we are certain here, we can have a causal inference for a whole sector of the European banks. And uh, we believe whatever we find would have some sort of relevance for a whole sector. And uh, that, that's how, kind of what we are shooting for, not just, let's say, one country or, or uh, a couple of banks where we have a little bit more data. 
So how does that help us here? So the way we would approach a, a question or ask the question around risk counting here is what are the non-financial risks firms are exposed to and how can they be quantified? So this is kind of what the framework is about and the academic uh, equivalent question here will be, how do we actually do that in general? And as we've seen before, we know there's already an approach in place for, uh, or let's say a demo in place for a bank. But for example, would that actually hold in other, other industry? Does that have to look different? Uh, we would ask the question, um, do we have to adjust this framework for certain uh, different companies within the same industry, but or across industries? Does it only work for banks? Does it work for, uh, let's say, chemical companies or health sector? And uh, basically, we're asking these questions. And uh, in order to answer that, we, we have a process. Well, ideally, we would like to collect as many, as many uh, data as possible and as many firms as possible and see whether our, our hypothesis holds. Let's say our hypothesis is, yes, we can use the same framework in multiple cases, but uh, you know, that's something we have to test. And this is where the collaboration with industry is important for us. So how would we go about answering that? Uh, well, first of all, we would take, uh, try to fit, find examples of, of, of willing partners where we do a qualitative mapping exercise and figure out if we look at sectors beyond the banking sector, would we uh, be able to map out the, the products that were mentioned earlier or the categories of risk uh, beyond processing risk and, and let's say trading risk, what, what it was mentioned before. We would have a qualitative exercise uh, working with partners uh, and trying to figure out what are the actual risk, non-financial risk exposures that are there. And then the next step would be figuring out what kind of quantification can we assign to those. So uh, what is the exposure uncertainty factor, for example, for certain types of risk categories uh, on, on, on a firm's operation. And then later on, once we figure out for an industry or for a set of firms, we would like to apply that framework and actually bring data to use and have that input uh, generate an output and then go what uh, Paul has mentioned earlier, do that kind of feedback loop of do the, does the framework work or do, how do we adjust the framework if, if it doesn't quite work? Uh, so that, that's our kind of research process, if, if you will. Okay, but obviously it all starts with, with collecting data, with uh, working together and coming together and figuring out uh, what is the kind of qualitative approach here and then we can move on to the quantification part. Right, so what would that look like in terms of step-by-step? Uh, step? Uh, obviously we're, we're coming here today and talking about uh, how we can work together as well, uh, but we would, you know, basically invite participating organizations so we can have a few more case studies than, than just one or two. We would like to uh, develop proofs of concepts for firms in different industries. And we, make, make, we may call that field testing or, or running surveys in certain parts of industries asking what kind of risk types uh, would, we, uh, would we expect in, in your firm or in your industry. So we, we're, we're kind of doing this qualitative mapping exercise, I think. And uh, obviously, if we're working together with industry partners, people are more rightly so worried about the confident, kind of confidentiality and kind of safety of their data. Not everyone wants to just send data to an academic in an Excel sheet. We understand that. Uh, so, you know, we have things in place at universities where we have kind of secure servers uh, and we can anonymize data sets. Um, so there are agreements like that in place uh, to work together with kind of more kind of uh, precarious uh, kind of situations where people don't want to share data with, with the public, but still we want to do some sort of analysis. And then later on, uh, once we have kind of this, this network together and uh, are able to collect data, we might be able to refine these frameworks and, and apply them to data and uh, the, uh, kind of generate an output. And for us uh, as economics, the output would be we have uh, academic working papers or we have industry reports, and then we take those um, basically to the public, obviously we're not sharing names or, or kind of data um, right away, but the results is something we would share. We would communicate that to at conferences, at uh, you know events like this, where we would meet up and, and disseminate uh, what the results are, whether they matter for a certain type of industry. And basically um, try to, um, I guess, I guess the, the right way of creating it, we're doing the roadshow that is mentioned here. So uh, we're, we're, Bring around the paper and, and refining kind of the results that we have uh, with with the idea that in the end you have a very very general concept a proof of concept of what risk accounting could look like for several industries not just for the banking sector and then be able to apply that and give that to kind of the implementation part uh, that you know you, you've probably seen uh, in the demo before how, how that would work but before that we, we would come up with uh, with a quantification framework and so on and I think, you know, that, that's kind of my way of saying, okay, what Julian has mentioned yesterday, uh, as an academic, we're trying to be 
uh, let's say the the critical friend in in, the, in this whole process and kind of a facilitator of of these interactions. So um, that that that's our role that we see here. You know, as I said, we're not a not-for-profit organization. We are we are interested in disseminating and creating knowledge in the business context. And uh, you know, I hope that that has become clear that this is our goal, and uh, we're happy to to be in the middle. Well, thank you very much for for having me, and I'm looking forward to the discussion uh, later on in the Q and A.